This video is designed and intended to be used in conjunction with a professional program of training and instruction supervised by an experienced instructor. It is not intended to be used without proper supervision, proper equipment, and proper safety considerations. This video is not intended to be used in the home or by non-professionals without the aforementioned supervision and safety equipment. Engaging in the activities depicted and described in this video in any manner whatsoever constitutes a waiver and release of any and all claims against Ultimate Industries Incorporated, its subsidiaries, employees, officers, directors, distributors, and others involved in the production and distribution of this video for any and all injuries, damages, or other claims arising from any and all activity engaged in as a result of the viewing of this video, whether such an injury, damage, or claim arises at the time of said viewing or at a time subsequent thereto. Prior to engaging in any of the activities depicted on this video, the viewer should consult a physician and be in good health. Хотите увидеть wrestling? Молчать ублюдки! Россия всегда будет номером один! Ultimate Industries present Ultimate Pro Wrestling Training. Welcome to Volume 1, Building a Foundation. On this tape you will learn how the pros warm up and step-by-step -step instruction on performing basic moves like the collar and elbow tie-up, running the ropes, leapfrogs, and the all-important bump. Our Ultimate University campuses are located minutes away from the Pacific Ocean in Huntington Beach and Los Angeles, California. We are an official WWF development area and we are widely considered by industry professionals to be the premier pro wrestling school in the nation. Your instructor is Tom Howard, a skilled veteran of countless matches performed around the world. Now to tell you more about Ultimate University is the brain behind the company, Rick Bassman. Here are the things that you need to make it in the pro wrestling business. You need a good look, you need to be able to work inside of the ring. You have to understand how the audience works, you know, how to, how to adopt the psychology of a wrestling match, what's known as telling the story. You should be able to talk on the microphone and get your character across and really believe in your character so the audience believes that. So it's a combination of a lot of factors. These are all things that can be worked on. You can come in somewhat out of shape and you better be willing to do everything you can to put your body in the best shape that it can get in. Be willing to do the work to develop a character take a thousand bumps and then a million bumps and not complain about it but come back for more to become a good worker. Study tapes, make it your craft, make it your life, find out what it takes to understand an audience and how they're going to react to you. These are all things you can learn and bring to yourself over time. First and foremost though is the attitude. You've got to come in and be willing to give it everything and to do so with a positive attitude and sacrifice in the process. Or anybody watching out there, you've heard this a thousand times, but please do not try this at home. Pro wrestling is one of the hardest things physically that anybody could ever do. Even given the proper circumstances, a good school with a good ring and good instructors, the chance for injury are still always there. Do not try this unless you're in the proper environment. You can know all the moves in the world, but without cardiovascular conditioning, you won't be able to perform them. You may think that 10 minutes in a wrestling ring isn't long, but without cardio training, it will seem like an eternity. Now, let's go over to our Huntington Beach, California campus and your instructor, Tom Howard. Let me demonstrate for you some of our warm-up drills. Uh, we use a variety of somersaults, three-quarter rolls, uh, jumping in and out of the ring, backward somersaults, and actually the bump that we use in professional wrestling, or the fall, the back fall that we use in professional wrestling. We've uh, combined those to make a uh, drill that we use in the beginning of practice and we'll, we'll break those down and demonstrate them for you right now. We're going to start out with the frontward roll. We've got Mikey Henderson here. And basically the technique used on this frontward roll is rather than uh, using open palms, you want to use fist. And you're pushing off with both feet at the same time rather than pushing with one foot first. You're putting your, your fist down, you're pushing off, you're frontward somersaulting and you're rolling back to your feet into a standing position. Mikey will demonstrate for you. Okay, that's the technique for the frontward roll. Now we want to show the technique for the three-quarter roll. Uh, the three-quarter roll, if we could have, this is Chris Daniels. Uh, if we could have Chris demonstrate the three-quarter roll, you want to lead off on the three-quarter roll with the same foot and the same arm, whether it be left or right. You're rolling across your uh, arm, across your shoulder, and rolling back to your feet on this. 
This is used in a lot of the falls uh, that we use in, in professional wrestling. That was right, and if we could just demonstrate left. As you can see, he's using the same arm and foot, whichever role he's going, whichever way he's going, he's using this, that arm and foot, whether it be right or left. Okay, now, uh, the third part of our drill is uh, jumping in and out of the ropes. If we could have, Stas, you want to demonstrate this? Basically, it's uh, once you're in the corner here, placing both hands, one on each rope, and uh, you're going to bend your knees and jump with both feet together over the rope, land to the outside. Okay? From there, you're going to turn, switch your hands, and jump back in. Stas will demonstrate for you. Okay. Now, it's important that you learn how to do this to, to either side, as you may use either side uh, in your wrestling technique. So you want to be able to do this to left or to right when you're exiting and entering the ring. Uh, now, once you've come back into the ring, we're going to show the backward somersault. And uh, the trick on this is, after you've jumped back in, to push off, drop to your rear end, push with your feet so that you make it back to where you hit your fist, push back, and land on your feet. And uh, if we could have someone demonstrate this, Chris. We're going to have him start from the outside, jump, if you could, Chris, jump in and then go right into the backward somersaults. He's going to roll right into you. Good. And he's, he's, he's landing on his feet there, under control, ready for the next movement. Now, the reason we use these in practice, we, we beat, the, beat the hell out of this drill in practice, is pretty much covers most every fall you'll be taking. Uh, one of the final falls we're going to demonstrate is the bump. And uh, we'll, we'll get into that in detail. The bump is the back fall that's primarily used in professional wrestling. Good. Now, the concept on the back bump is that it's an explosive movement where he's attacking the mat. Um, he's tucking his chin as he comes down, and he's essentially attacking the mat, hitting the upper region of his back, and leveling himself off with his arms as he hits. Now, that's pretty much all, those are pretty much all the elements of our opening drill. Uh, we're going to go ahead and show the opening drill now, uh, live speed, with uh, different participants, so you get an idea of exactly how it's performed. In, in discussing the uh, back fall that we just demonstrated, the bump, we're going to show you a couple of techniques that uh, we use or training techniques we use to uh, prepare for doing that fall. Uh, the technique used on this is, is very important and uh, if, if you're not following the, 
every element of what we're showing you, uh, the potential for, for injury is pretty great. Uh, we're going to start out with the, uh, using a, a, your opponent or a partner in a technique. Basically, if we could have Frankie get on all fours, uh, the first technique we're going to demonstrate here on the back fall is basically to sit on your partner's back, cross your arms, and then you're going to take the fall. Now, the important elements here are, number one, that you tuck your chin to your chest so you avoid hitting your head. And uh, as, you, as you hit, you want to strike the, the mat with your palms. Avoid striking with your elbows, primarily your palms. And uh, we'll go ahead and have, have that demonstrated, if we could. Chris, if we could. Okay, now another technique that we use is actually uh, a variation of the bump, which is uh, to show the bump taken as a frontward somersault or frontward flip. And uh, for preparation for this, you basically push up into a handstand position. From the handstand position, you flip over and you want to land flat with your feet, your back, and your, your palms hitting all at the same time. Once again, tucking the chin and uh, trying to make one hit. If you're hitting with two hits on this or you're rolling, then you're not doing it correctly. I want to go ahead and demonstrate this as well. You know, you, you see all different levels of experience here, and you see some, some that are hitting once crisply, some that are rolling through, uh, and you kind of you can see where you're going to end up with this with time. The idea is, as you're hitting, you're arching your back, tucking your chin, making one, hitting, making one hit. Uh, of course, you, you're going to be able to level the blow by landing with your, with your heels on the mat at the same time. It'll take a lot of the pressure off your back. Uh, for another technique, we want to demonstrate uh, if we could get uh, Cranky, if you don't mind. Partner to go down again and uh, actually pushing off your partner's back into a flat position once again. And uh, this is a little more of an advanced technique, but uh, if we can go ahead and have whoever is interested in demonstrating this. Excellent. Good. Now you can see when, once they're, when they're pushing off here, they're working on getting a little bit of air, a little bit of uh, lag time before they hit. And uh, this is preparation for a lot of the other movements you'll do, primarily on tape three, uh, where you're, uh, you're pushing off, flying, and landing flat. Good. Okay. Uh, this takes us into the actual bump, the back bump, and uh, we're going to have everyone walk through this. Now, there are some different methods of taking this uh, it, it, as far as the techniques used. Uh, one of them is to go back and to actually slap this way, which levels the blow across your arms, your upper, your shoulders, and uh, upper back, keeping most of the pressure off your lower back. Uh, the other one is to slap your wrist back this way, which alleviates elbow pain. Uh, in the first, you're going to find you'll slap your elbows a lot. And after years of doing this, as I've been doing it for several years, I can barely take the pain of having my elbows hit. So I do it a little different. I'll demonstrate how I do it. We'll have each person go through and demonstrate. Um, what you're going to find in professional wrestling is as many people as uh, there are that step in a ring that are trained professional wrestlers, you'll see probably that many different techniques. Everyone takes the basic techniques and they revise it to fit their body style, their individual wrestling technique. So we'll go ahead and demonstrate now. Uh, the, bump, the bump, as I call it, that I use is uh, 
I'll start it off and we'll have everyone else show theirs. Okay, now we're going to show basically a, a movement feed, feeding into a punch and each person taking that same fall. Uh, tape two, we cover striking and you'll see uh, basic techniques on these punches. So uh, we want to go ahead and show the, uh, the bumping portion of that, which is the fall taken. And we're going to go ahead and uh, have each person feed in and uh, take a punch and go into the bump to show the timing of the technique. Um, <clears throat> if you want to feed in, I'll go ahead and throw the punches. Ready? Okay, the concept there is, is to show the timing involved. Uh, you're feeding in as you're coming into a punch, clothesline, whatever you're coming into, you're feeding in. You feel the movement, you feel the uh, strike begin to touch you, and you take your fall. So we're going to demonstrate another uh, technique used in uh, training for the backfalls or bumps we use in professional wrestling. This is actually a somersault into a backfall, and uh, this can be, be done two different ways. One of them is to lead off with one foot at a time kick over and land flat. The other is to push off with both at the same time, frontward somersault and land flat. Things to remember on this, number one, tuck your chin to your chest so you avoid hitting your head. Uh, number two, to land with your feet at the same time as your back, flat. And uh, number three, to slap your palms as you land to uh, spread the fall across your arms and upper uh, back region. I'll go ahead and demonstrate and we'll go through techniques. We're going to go ahead and cover how to run the ropes. Uh, the rings that you're going to work in are going to be various lengths. Some are 16, some are 20 feet. Uh, so the number of steps you take is going to vary, and also depending on your height, of course. Uh, what we're going to mainly cover is the technique used to, uh, as you're hitting the ropes, going back and forth. Uh, when you hit to the rope, you're going to usually hit with your right foot. This will be your pivot foot. You're going to go ahead and grab the rope, hit the pivot foot, turn towards the rope. You want to always have this arm over the rope as you hit. Uh, turn, pivot, catch your foot, and then move forward. Footing again, pivot foot, turn, catch forward. Turn, catch forward. Basically, that's going to vary, as I said, depending on your height, how fast you're running, everything else, how many steps you're taking in between. Bottom line is as you're getting close to the rope, you want to make sure that your pivot foot, your right foot, is about two to three feet away from the ropes. You're catching the rope with your right hand. You're turning. This foot is coming back and going back to a toe here to uh, protect you from falling. You don't want to do this. You're going to be off balance. And uh, you don't want to be too far back. You'll end up tripping yourself on the back of the apron. So you're catching it against the rope, hitting, and then going forward. We're going to demonstrate to people running the ropes.
Okay, now, uh, once you've covered basically how to run the ropes, I'm going to show how to push your opponent into the rope and actually throw your opponent in. Uh, the idea here is anytime you're pushed into the rope, you want to grab the rope so that you don't accidentally get pushed through. You can show how it works. You can get it pushed through if your arm's not over the top and you're not grabbing a hold of the rope. So anytime that you're, that you're fed into the rope, you need to hold on to the rope. Now, uh, I'm always grabbing the same position here, which is his left hand, my left hand. We're going wrist to wrist and I'm pushing against his chest right here. This is always the same, doesn't change. I'm stepping in with my right foot, pushing him in here, and then feeding him off the rope. Okay, that's the basic uh, push off or throw into the ropes. I'm gonna show the reversal now. There's two primary techniques used in reversal. Um, <clears throat> the first one is as I push him in here, he's gonna step across, hold on to my arm. I'm gonna lean back until the arm's full extended, and he's gonna push me in. And I feed back in. Okay, now that's number one. Number two is to hold on to my hand with both of his hands, go back with his body and fling me in. We'll show that. Yeah, now obviously he needs to exaggerate the movement here. Yeah, he wants to exaggerate the movement here on these reversals so that if uh, he want, go ahead and throw me in. As I'm getting pushed in here from this point forward, I'm exaggerating this movement and pushing him in full speed. Um, it's, it's once again, it's the body language, the exaggeration of the movement that's going to make this look powerful. Uh, to demonstrate the second version of. Showing the uh, push off and, and throwing techniques from uh, rope to rope, we're going to show corner to corner now. We're also going to show some of the falls that are taken from the corners once you've uh, been thrown into the corner. Same situation here. I'm grabbing the hand, putting my hand across his chest, throwing him in, and uh, exaggerating the throwing movement, the pushing movement. And uh, basically, when you're when you're running this and you're in a Frankie position here, as you're approaching the corner, when you've been about three, four feet away, you're turning. You're actually jumping and you're trying to hit level between the middle and the top turnbuckle with your back. Uh, I'll demonstrate one time myself and then I'll throw, show with uh, Frankie. So as I'm about three feet away, I turn and I hit. Now that's a level hit and uh, as long as I'm hitting level with my lower back, uh, hitting the middle turnbuckle, my upper back hitting the top, and once again catching my hands around the ropes, anytime you're hitting the ropes, I'd recommend grabbing a hold of the ropes so that you can avoid slipping through it happens all the time and the only way you're going to control it is to actually put your hands and, and your elbows whenever possible over the ropes we'll go ahead and demonstrate this with Frankie okay now once you've hit that turnbuckle it can be used for probably 20 30 different moves from there or transitions from there uh, one of the basics is just a face bump, and that's basically if I've taken him and I've thrown him extremely hard into the turnbuckle, he hits the turnbuckle and falls flat on his face. We're going to go ahead and demonstrate that. There's actually a technique used. Okay, now the fall that he's taken here, as you can see, he's uh, landed with his uh, right knee slightly bent to uh, protect himself. He's come down actually hit his face on the mat and come down with his uh, forearms to provide pr protection on this fall. The standard tie-up used in professional wrestling is called the collar and elbow tie-up. Uh, we're going to demonstrate it here, myself and Chris Daniels. Uh, basically, you're, you're starting off maybe six feet away from each other, you're circling six to eight feet away throughout the ring. And then as you come in, you're feeding in, if you notice, both of us with the left foot. Now we don't want to cross our feet here, we're going to end up with problems knocking knees, knocking heads. So we want to keep our feet probably about six inches away from each other, which would be natural if you're doing it correctly. And then it's a collar and elbow tie-up. Um, left hand goes to the collar, right hand goes to the elbow. And it, this is the technique used. Okay, now there's a slight looping of the arms as you come in. You'll see as we come in and do this. And a slapping, basically. Ready? Okay, so we'll step back and do full speed. 
Okay, you, you notice a little slapping there. I'm coming back, basically applying a little bit of pressure, a little bit of pop here on the elbow. And he's doing the same thing on this side. It's a little bit stiff in the beginning and then a little bit loose so that you can work into your next movement. One more time. Okay. Okay, this is another drill we use here at Ultimate University, combining three of the most commonly used moves in professional wrestling, uh, tackle, drop down, leapfrog. Uh, basically, we'll go through each one and then we'll show you the drill in its entirety. Uh, the tackle itself, we'll start off by throwing your opponent into the rope here, and then as he comes back and feeds in, I'm, my motion is continuing towards him, and then we're going left shoulder to left shoulder. Now you want to assume a position of an L with your uh, arm, and uh, as you hit, you want to basically slap your opponent on your back here. Your feet are basically crossing, just about touching to the crossing, depending on how you actually end up foot footwork position. Come on in here, and you're slapping as you hit. Now uh, the person in motion is generally going to knock the other person down who's not in motion. That's the way it normally works, depending of course on size and uh, the particular spot you're, you're working. Uh, from here, from the tackle, the, your opponent uh, is taking a fall to his back or a back bump. Okay, then you're going to be running the ropes to the right. Okay, so once he's down on the ground, he's taking his bump, I'm turning, I'm running the ropes to the right, and he's doing what we call the drop down. Now the drop down is uh, basically him attempting to trip you or tackle you. And uh, as I run, he turns to his belly to the right and attempts to trip me, and I'm going to jump over him. Okay, now he's going to turn, get up and face me, and we're going to go into what's called the leapfrog. And that's after I've come off this rope, I come through, he jumps, and I go underneath him. Okay, and then we're going to go right back into the drill, but it'll be reversed this time. You'll see, because I'm going to go underneath him, he's going to turn, and then he'll take the tackle. Tackle, drop down, into the leapfrog. Okay, we'll demonstrate at full speed. From the top position here. I'm from the whoops. Okay, basically you can use that all day long. You do those ten, ten times back to back. This is gonna be good for cardiovascular conditioning. They're also gonna be good for uh, working with your opponent and uh, learning to control your body. We're going to go over some moves, transitional moves that are used once you've tied up, once you've done the collar and elbow tie up, uh, some transitional moves that are basically offensive moves that are to take control of your opponent. And uh, I'm going to use basically uh, each of the uh, people here and we'll, I'll do a different move with each one and we'll describe it as we go. Uh, the first one's called a duck under or a pass behind. And it's from the tie up here, I'm going to push here, drop here and go behind him and gain control around his waist, okay? Now I'll do that full speed. Okay. Okay. The next one is going to be a top wrist lock and uh, do the slow motion for you again. We're going to tie up here and then from here I'm going to come back to the wrist. I'm going to knock the wrist up and at the same time I'm going to fold across the elbow and I'm going to come underneath, grab my own bicep, and grab his wrist, and step up and over and apply pressure. Okay, and once again, you're pumping your legs here to give the appearance of pressure. Okay, we'll do, go full speed on this. Good. Excellent. Okay, now I'm going to take the arm on this one. Basically, from the tie-up position here, I'm going to come back to the wrist. I'm going to throw my elbow up and over into this position, and I'm basically taking the arm into an arm bar. From here, you can go into a key lock. You, just, you can stay down. You can duck under an arm ringer. Uh, a lot of variations from here. So from the tie-up. Okay. Now this is another variation of taking the arm. It's basically from the tie up. I'm gonna go over here and it's the same thing. I have a key lock. She can come around. 
I have a key lock on the arm right here once I've gone over and I can spin under into an arm bar or an arm, arm twist here and back up into position okay so same situation you tie up right here over here spin, spin under back up okay good now we're going to go into uh, taking a headlock off the tie up same situation collar and elbow I'm going to basically push back on the elbow and then pull the head into my left elbow into position now a couple important issues on this number one once I push this back I'm going to pull in the head and I'm going to step back my left leg for control in position, okay? Now my left leg needs to be back. I want to avoid having my back to my opponent because it's very difficult to uh, transition from here. So my left leg's back and then I want to be sure, secondly, that I'm below the ear. I want to avoid being high up. I want to be down below the ear and then of course the, the grip on the hands. A lot of variations of this. There's this style, three finger grip, standard grip. Of course you can do this as well. The main thing here is that you're staying, making sure you're below the, the ear. If you're not below the ear and you find yourself high up, go ahead and grab the chin, lift the head up, and apply the pressure. Okay? Now, once again, this foot being back, for me to apply pressure here, I'm gonna lower my body and crank it up on my way up. So I'm here, here, cranking it up on the way up. Okay? Thank you. We're going to cover the uh, hammer lock transition from the collar and elbow tie up. I'm going to go ahead and demonstrate here. From the collar and elbow position, I'm going to keep my right arm on the elbow, basically move a little up to the bicep, and then I'm going to duck under into position, and uh, you'll see it takes me right into a hammer lock. As I duck under here, my arm stays on the bicep, duck under. I'm in the hammer lock. And you can see this is a legitimate move. I'm able to apply quite a bit of pressure here. And then from here I can transition right onto the wrist into a hammer lock that we can work from. Go ahead and show you that in live action. Okay. Okay. Uh, we're going to also show you here some takedowns as you're going into the collar and elbow, some takedowns. The first one is a leg takedown. As we go into the collar and elbow, I'm going to drop and I'm going to basically put my left forearm into the hip and I'm going to pick the leg at the same time, okay? So we're coming in, we're proceeding to tie up here and I had to drop. Okay, we'll back up please. Just fold over me, wait, wait, wait for me to pull, okay? As I come in, I dropped, I have my left forearm on his hip and my right hand underneath his knee. Now I want to pull his, his leg, I want to pull his leg out, not between my legs, but actually out. He's going to fold over me and then take a bump to his back. I'm going to demonstrate here. In a position. I've got his leg here prepared to work the leg to this full speed. Got the leg here for a key lock. Work the leg. Any way you want from that position. Okay, I'm gonna demonstrate uh, the tie up into the fireman's carriage. This is an amateur move that uh, I'd highly recommend. Uh, it's a nice move. Go ahead and switch positions here so you can get the view. Now, the way you wanna do this from a tie up, collar and elbow tie up, it, it, the natural thing would be to, to pull yourself in. But what you actually need to do, you need to take the right arm, you need to loop underneath the arm and get an overhook. Okay? Once you have the overhook, I'm going to duck my head into the armpit and that begins the movement. From here I'm going to drop my right knee and I'm going to basically dump him across my shoulders here and then I'm going to take him across into position. Now from here, if, you're, if you finish it properly, it's going to be a nice, very nice move to control your opponent once you've taken him down to the ground. And I'm going to switch my knees to this knee dropping, this knee coming up across the side of his head, and I immediately have a key lock, and I'm in a nice position of control. Go ahead and demonstrate this one full speed. 
We're going to demonstrate uh, just a little bit of hold-to-hold -hold transition from the tie-up, from the collar and elbow tie-up. We're going to go ahead and start out with the collar and elbow tie-up into the duck behind. And then from here, basically you're going to lift and tilt down to the ground. Once, once your opponent's down, you're going to assume a, face, a front face lock position. From here, your opponent's going to grab your arm, spin out into a hammer lock from here. Okay, now that was uh, about eight speed, and we're going to go ahead and show it full speed now. Okay, good. Excellent. Okay, that's basically showing the transitions from the tie-up. As you can see from a tie-up, probably 20, 30 moves you can do right off the bat from the tie-up to take control and then go into hold to hold, go into some spots and get your match started. This is a drill that we use to train for arm drags and uh, this is not only for the person giving but also for the person taking the arm drag. We're going to start off with the elbows hooked and uh, the person giving is basically going to spin around facing the opposite direction they start, ending up on their knees and the person taking is going to post their arm on the shoulder, jump over straight, not sideways, and land flat on their back with their heels at the same time. I'll demonstrate and we'll go ahead and show the drill. Something we want to cover now is basically controlling your opponent and moving him around the ring to where you want him to be for your next move, your next offensive move. Uh, we're going to start out with showing you from the collar and elbow tie up. Uh, basically, we're going to tie up here, and then from here, I'm going to basically push him back to where I want him to be. I'm going to smother him, push him into position, and then prepare from here to oh, cut him off with a punch, punch. Or if I'm just going to throw him in from here, I'm basically going to take here, throw him to the next position. Same situation. I'm going to take him to the corner, we tie up, and from here I'm going to walk him back to the corner, same thing, as soon as we get close to the corner, I'm pushing him in, I'm locking his arms up so he can't punch me, preparing for a clean break, and then if you want to punch, or whatever you want to do from there, it's your business. It's basically walking the opponent back, being the aggressor, and taking control of him. Okay, now once you've got him in place, say we've got him against the ropes here, I want to move him, okay? Uh, there's a couple ways to do this. Number one is just an arm ringer. And let's just say I pushed him back to here. I'm going to give him a punch or a kick to start off with. I'll give him a kick. Ow! Now from here, let's say I want to move him to the corner. I'm going to start out with an arm ringer here. I'm going to grab the arm. I'm going to twist under. And get his arm into position. Now he's going to move with me where I want him to move. And I'm going to move him to where I need to be here. Ugh! Right there, we're in the corner ready for the next movement. That's one method. Another method is to take a key lock, same situation, I push him back to here, I'm going to take what's called a key lock, and that is basically from here, grabbing the arm, wrapping around and key locking it. Now I've got him in a position here, I'm going to apply pressure to the shoulder, I'm not able to move him wherever I need to move him. If he starts to, to, to fight you, or he starts to push up, basically you snap it back down, into position, and move him wherever you need him to be, for your next movement. The key here is to be extremely aggressive and look very solid while you're doing this stuff. Okay, when we're talking about controlling your opponent, uh, we're going to show basically some control moves from the headlock position and then some counters for your opponent to throw you in off the headlock. We're going to start here with the tie-up position, collar and elbow. And I'm going to snatch a headlock on Frankie in a position. Okay, now basically I'm in a position here to control him. He's going to wrap his arms around me. He's going to start with that. He might take an arm up to my head, push off my face. Now I've got, I'm in control here as I have control of the headlock. 
and I have the ability to move him and walk him around wherever we need to be from cranking on the head. Now what he's going to do is he's going to basically push me back in order to push me into the ropes using leverage here. <laughs> push me back here, forward pitch in. Okay, that's one method. That's by pushing the person back in order to go forward. That's usually going to be used if your opponent's bigger than you and you need the momentum of pushing them back. The other one is from the headlock. It's basically he's going to just lean back and push me straight forward, push off his head. Here we go. Go. Same thing here. He leans back, pushes me off his head, and I can feed back into him. We can go from any uh, transitional move from there. We're going to show you a move now called a snap mare. There's a couple of variations. There's a snap mare, there's a flying mare. These are basically moves that uh, are control moves where you take the opponent down to the ground. It's another variation of like a headlock takedown that where you're taking the opponent from a standing position down to the ground. Um, demonstrate here on prototype. Basically, I'm going to come around the head here. You want to use both hands out of respect because of the fact that as a 260, 270 pound man, and I don't want to clip him with one arm, is not very realistic. So both hands around the head. I'm going to drop to my inside knee, my right knee, my right arm, and then I'm going to clip him over here. He's going to basically you jump with both feet at the same time and land flat, just as we've done in our other drills. So start out. I'm going to come in here, arm here around the head, grab my other hand here, and the drop, and snap him over. Okay. Now, two ways to do this. Either you can land flat, or you can stay down flat. Number one, you can either land flat on his rear end sitting up, or you can stay down flat. And there's a lot of moves to go to from here. But it's a basic takedown, very simple to do, that'll put your opponent in a position where you can move, transition to your next segment or spot. Okay, we're going to demonstrate now in the drill formation, basically, odd man out, snap mares. You want to start it out, Mikey? Now the other variation I mentioned is called the flying mare. Uh, very similar move. The primary difference on this one is that you're actually going to use only one arm on this to start out. You're going to kick your body up and you're going to come down with your hip and your knee and post with your left hand while you do this. Uh, we're going to step out a little to demonstrate this. So this is, a, this is a fancier version of the snap mare basically called the flying mare. I'm coming in the same way right here and I'm kicking my feet up high. Ah! And that's it. Now from here, I'm going to go right into a reverse chin lock, which is me coming forward here, snapping it on. It's a chin lock on it. Okay? Good. So we're going to show another variation to an arm drag. This is like an advanced arm drag technique, basically where rather than connecting elbow to elbow and spinning around, you're jumping and flipping up, over, up and over and landing on your belly with your opponent. We're going to demonstrate it now. Okay, we've got a headlock from the headlock. We're going to pitch him in. Into the arm drag, down into the key lock. It's a great controlling movement. You end with nice control at the end. Okay, another offensive control to take your opponent down is the drop toe hold. Uh, a lot of variations on this. I'll, I'll, we'll demonstrate two of them right now. One of them is from a hold to hold position. Basically, we're going to tie up, and then as, as I go to a position behind him, in other words, I'm going to pass behind, he's going to drop into a drop toe hold. He's going to step behind. You can see what he's done here. He stepped behind with his left, wrapped his leg around, and he's got my foot tripped now. And he's going to apply pressure, and I'm taking a flat face bump. <laughs> flat down. Okay. Well, then he switches over to a headlock. That's uh, Chris Daniels being an advanced wrestler for you. We're going to go ahead and have these guys demonstrate full speed. Nice. Okay, the other, the other variation on this uh, is off the ropes or when the person, your opponent's running into you. And uh, we'll go ahead and do this one off of a reversal into a drop toe hold. Very simple. I'm going to pitch him in. He's going to reverse me. 
And as I feed in here, he puts his foot out, and same, same exact instance, the bottom foot or the left foot catches the front of my foot, the right foot catches the inside of my left knee. He applies pressure, and I fall down flat to my face. So we're gonna go ahead and have this demonstrated full speed for you. Good, now you see, you still maintain control onto the leg. So if Chris wants to shoot up and apply pressure to the back of the leg, he can do that, or he can, he can actually separate, switch forward and go into a headlock. Probably 30 different variations you can go to from here. You can pretty, be pretty creative once you got your point down and move into your next offensive position. <laughs>